the uh, August 15, 2018 uh, regular Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority meeting. Um, item number two, public comment. This is time for public comment. If you wish to speak, uh, come forward and uh, give your name and address for the record. And uh, you'll have five minutes to talk, just like every other meeting. So anybody out there that wants to come out? Mr. Wolf? Thank you for the five minutes. Uh, Ron Wolf, 33 North Troy Street. Uh, I wanted to point out a couple of things. I'm, I'm a bit... I'm a bit bothered by uh, the treatment of uh, what's you know what's going on with Royal Oak Manor. Uh, I think that uh, people don't realize a few things about seniors. Uh, contrary to popular opinion, most seniors don't have a barrel of money. And uh, contrary to popular opinion, there's a, a good portion of people in Royal Oak that don't have a barrel of money. And uh, also, uh, it's a known fact, the older you get, the sooner you're gonna die. A lot of seniors now that are having problems with uh, maintaining their cars so they can uh, see their doctors, and in the, you know, they're under a lot of, this puts them under a tremendous amount of stress that may shorten their lives even more dramatically. And uh, they, they're not gonna be around, I think, uh, that much longer. And I think you could see ahead. If you see ahead, you can, uh, I, I would suggest bagging the, you know, I, I know there's, it's, it's being looked at to bag those meters. And I know you're concerned about our speech and eats and probably could be done after our speech and eats. But please look at uh, providing, the, bagging those meters, about 18 of them around Royal Oak Manor and uh, doing what you do with other neighborhood uh, permit parking permits, and that's charged them only twenty-five dollars for the year. Uh, that's only fair. And but but the key thing, to, in my idea, is to limit it, limit this to the, for maybe for three years, four years. Let's say four years. And that way, the the building can adjust. It can adjust by informing new tenants that parking will not may not be available for them, and that would be fair. And on the other end, the building could strive to make sure that there aren't tenants that are just storing their cars by making sure they, they can start their cars, they can move their cars, they have the ability to drive, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure they're willing to do that. And uh, I think this would solve a lot of problems on the uh, long term and short term. And it would be merciful to those people that are uh, presently in, in this big crunch now, uh, another thing, I was walking Royal Oak, and I happened to note, in Ferndale, I happened to notice some restaurants without, without it railings in their seating. And I noticed uh, past Lafice restaurant, his, his railing is broke, and uh, apparently uh, he didn't care to put up out a new one and, and have to pay the extra fee and all of that. He put out a couple of tables and apparently was told to take them in. I think that if you allow Every restaurant, that new restaurant coming to Royal Oak, until they get settled and everything else, uh, to allow them to put out two tables and four chairs. This would uh, enhance the walkability, make Royal Oak look much more attractive, and people walking by and seeing a, a fill, two filled tables, even if it's only four chairs, might think, hey, the food is good in there, let's try it out. It uh, wouldn't cost the city any money, and uh, of course, the restaurants would then be encouraged to put out more tables, and then you can charge the uh, the, the normal uh, fee for putting out uh, an enclosed an enclosure. Don't forget, the permit now costs two hundred dollars, and they probably the, these they have to pay for putting up these railings. And uh, some restaurants do it themselves, but it's costly for for the, for the small person and uh, small businesses and uh, bistro type businesses that people that are just coming in, especially family owned. The chains don't care, you know, that they have the money to spend. So if you want to attract small quality individual restaurants, you know, bistros, I think allowing them to put out two tables and chairs is, wouldn't be a big, big problem. So uh, another thing, just before I leave, 
Uh, I read in the New York paper they're having summer street, summer city street days in some neighborhoods in New York, big time. And it seems that that would be a great idea. I like the idea of the spooktacular. I, I say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You don't have to spend any more money on it. I was a bit remiss when the idea of putting hot air balloons, stationary hot air balloons, at, at cost to the city when we have so many other priorities. As I say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, I think adding, going back and until we have a decent downtown park, and I hope you're going to look very closely at making it the best park possible for the reasons I've reiterated time and time again before you. And um, uh, an LED fountain, color fountain, would be so unique. To be no, no, no one in Oklahoma County has one. And now these uh, colored lights, because they're LED, are far less expensive than the old-fashioned uh, fancy lights in the fountains. And um, I think if we have, even if it's only a two-acre park, if you make it beautiful, you're going to uh, bring a lot of people into Royal Oak. You're going to raise the property values, et cetera, et cetera. OK, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? David Richards. I'm here for National Ballet. It's an agenda item, number six, I believe. Will I get a chance to speak then, or should I speak now? Um, you're free to speak now, if you wish. Um, if, if there's something that you want to present, we'll give you some time to do it on the agenda right. item. Then I'll wait till then. Thank you. Good. Anybody else want to address the board today? Yes, sir. My name is Alan Ashley. I live at Royal Oak Manor. Um, as you know, we do have a major parking problem uh, being shortened even when the new construction starts at um, Burton and Katzman when they start. I ha um, he was supposed to be here this today, but he couldn't make it, so he'll be uh, at our place on the 19th, which is the third Wednesday of the month. Uh, any of you would like to come and hear him speak, uh, you're free to come to Royal Oak Manor around 11.45, 11.30. Uh, just let me know ahead of time. Um, the biggest problem we have right now is coming up with our speeds and aids. Um, we can squeeze some people in our parking lots in odd places on stones and that, which is fine. Um, I haven't heard anything from the police department yet on passes for anything on us, uh, but um, when that when the, when the new building goes in, and I'll speak more during that time on the agenda, is we're we're trapped where there's no place for us to park. We have approximately 33 to 35 people driving cars, and they are now uh, some are parked in the park lot. Uh, P7, I think it is, across from Royal Oak Manor. Some are parked there. A lot of them are parked uh, across uh, on 7th and on 6th and on uh, William Street. Um, the people won't, are afraid to cross Main Street, not only four lanes of traffic, but railroad ties. We've already had one lady uh, in the last month and a half slip and fall and break her kneecap. Um, Something has to be done. I know in the, I'll be talking to the traffic committee about lights and all that, but right now the parking passes is the worst thing. Um, it's, it's become, uh, uh, I don't know where we're going to park when the construction starts. I know DDA, I know the city commission, I know the, the city manager is all looking in, but there is no place to park for our members and uh, unless we get bereavement on, on bag meters and uh, the 2 to 6 a.m. lifted, uh, right now it's temporary with the police, they're not looking at it, but if it's permanent then uh, there are more spaces that we can use, but right now we're tight and it's going to get tighter uh, when the construction starts and also when the new Jewish Community Center opens up on the south end of uh, uh, Royal Oak Manor because they have no parking and it is going to be on 7th Street. So 
Right now, we, we have no parking, literally, literally no parking for our residentials when that construction starts. Uh, by bagging the meters will help, but I will talk more on that when my time comes on the agenda item. But thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Bring it back to the table. Uh, item number three, approval of the meeting minutes from July 18th, 2018. So Motion by Director Baggio. Second it. Second. Any comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item four, expense items. Uh, A, I believe, is for informational purposes. No action is necessary on that. If there's any questions. Anything? Nope. Anybody? Okay. Item B. Item B, I would point out that I emailed the summary of the portion of the invoice that wasn't included initially. Um, it's listed in the original packet as a, a previous or prior balance of some $3,200. Uh, I did ask for a copy of details on that. I emailed it out to the board, but then I also handed out hard copies in front of you on your um, uh, desk. Um, so you should have the total there that covers both May and June of some $7,100 related to uh, the 696 project uh, closing and things with Singh, as well as a short period of uh, discussion regarding Etkin. So, so this was uh, primarily this was all for the closing of the 696 property with Singh, right? And follow up with uh, the tri party and some other agreements with uh, Etkin. Oh, okay. Etkin was just, I think, a discussion on the parking and how it works. Okay. So I do need a motion to approve. Okay. I'll move to approve it. Second. Motion by Director Krieger. Seconded by Director Riley. Any further comments, questions? Uh, one more quick. This, so this, sure. this, this is the end, basically? Should be. Okay. Anything else? Call for the vote. Aye. Aye. Uh, favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Well, let me, let me, there's a couple outstanding things that may involve um, or Russell Weber. One is the reimbursement agreement regarding the Edison expenses. That has not That's been drafted yet uh, and brought back for your approval. Um, and then there's a couple license agreement issues that still need to be dealt with, but we've got between now and they're actually into construction, so we've got some time to get them done. But So there should, there might be a future items, but this should be the last thing at this point. Okay, item number five, alley improvement program. This is divided up into three separate uh, entities here, so um, we'll take these one at a time. Yeah. Tim, you wanna start us off on item A? Sure. Really, um, excuse me. Really quick. So um, my company is involved in the first resolution. And it's been advised that we I recuse myself from that discussion and vote. If you could split it up into two, I have we can do involvement that. in the second one. I'd like to partake sure. in the conversation. Sure. If you're starting with one, I'll step away. Yeah. Okay. So back to item A. Yeah, very briefly, uh, the infrastructure committee met on... Um, what are really three items regarding the alleys, the, the alley that runs north and south from 11 Mile down to 6th Street. Uh, it was broken into component parts uh, given um, what's going on around uh, each segment as well as uh, potential funding as well as current status of construction activity. Uh, so the first one I just listed in no particular order was in regards to the alley between 2nd and 3rd Street, 
adjacent to Mr. B's, as well as adjacent to the new office building current under, currently under construction. Uh, the developer, um, Central Park Development Group, is required uh, to rebuild the alley because they did some underground utility work, water line work, uh, and so they basically ripped out what was there. Uh, they're required to put back a standard uh, concrete alley with uh, sidewalks and uh, along adjacent to the businesses. Um, what's come up is the hope through both the infrastructure committee, adjacent businesses, as well as the developer to make it more of a decorative uh, uh, design pattern and treatment along that segment of the alley. And those details, drawings, are, are also part of the packet in terms of what they would like to do to it in terms of the pattern, the materials. I also handed out the color uh, swap or uh, item that they're looking at, so you've got something to look at in your, your front of you this evening as well uh, for additional detail. On top of that, the infrastructure committee looked at a estimated uh, cost uh, for this segment <coughs> provided by their construction company, Clark Construction. It was broken down into uh, uh, what they had assigned to it as far as putting back the standard concrete alley, and then it was broken out into uh, if, the, if the colored stamped concrete were added instead. So you'll see that initial uh, table, it's uh, dated uh, July 11th of 2018. That's the one the, in, the, in, the committee saw. And what was proposed by um, <coughs> Central Park uh, Development Group, the office building developer, Mr. Boji, whichever title you want to give it, um, was that they would pick up half the difference between the, those two costs, or at that time some $107,000 uh, $107, split in half, uh, they were asking if the DDA would consider paying half of that or 53600 Subsequent to that, uh, I did receive a letter from Central Park Development Group and a revised um, cost table. Uh, the memo indicates their increased cost was, a, was the difference was a, about 120000 and they're asking the DDA to consider roughly uh, $60,000. So you'll see those in the packet as well. Um, the infrastructure committee did not meet after that was um, submitted, so you'll see the recommendation from the infrastructure committee is to um, the DDA to pay the half or the $53,663. Uh, the committee did discuss the idea of potentially recommending that the business owners adjacent to the west participate uh, they discussed the idea of potentially asking the city to special assess portions of it. At the end of it, the infrastructure committee decided, given all that's going on and the development stuff, that they're recommending simply that the DDA pay that half or the 53663. So that's what came out of the infrastructure committee. Uh, I don't know if those members that are here want to add anything to that discussion, um, but they did not see the revised memo or uh, cost estimate uh, prior to me getting it and posting it on the agenda. So um, that's item one. I, if you want to deal with them, yeah, I think we want to. I think we want to stop there if we could. I um, know. I know that Mr. Boji and his okay. Library we'll see here if, if you uh, have questions or want to hear from them. Okay. Uh, anything from the board? Yes. It shows it on the more detailed plan, but on the pretty picture plan, where are the, gar the dumpsters going for these restaurants? That's not part of this. That's not, that's not, that's just a representation of other work that's been done okay. in places. So where are the dumpsters going? Just the same place? A pretty alleyway with dumpsters? Well, in this segment that we're talking about between second and third, the, the dumpsters are either in the buildings uh, along the west side or they're in Mr. Boji's building. 
Um, so they're all dealt with in this segment. Um, the segment you're looking at was further down. Okay. This is Johnson. Some questions for what the, the committee's approach to this is. Uh, I'm, inter I'm very interested in doing this, but I don't really like dealing with this in all the pieces. I mean, if we're going to do this piece of it, I want to do the other pieces. Okay. Uh, and I haven't seen any numbers yet on the other pieces. Do okay. you have any idea? Um, all I can give you is the information that we had at the committee level was that um, the reason that we were dealing um, with this first was a time factor um, issue because uh, they were ready to do the paving on between second and third. That portion needed to be dealt with immediately, at least that's what we were told. Um, the infrastructure committee, and this is a bigger picture, but the infrastructure committee has been talking about this alley improvement, an alley improvement program for some time now. Um, We've uh, narrowed it down and focused that what our concentration, our first concentration, our first effort should be between 11 Mile Road uh, and the alley going all the way up to, I think we discussed the end of 5th, possibly. Um, we know that when the parking structure uh, goes up that that segment is also going to have to be um, redone. Um, and this is kind of a unique situation. Um, the alleyway behind the project, and I believe also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, but I believe where the parking structure is going to be is not a normal size alley. It's considerably wider, and I think it was our hope to um, 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 create a pedestrian walkway and make it look, you know, as feasible as we possibly could. So I to agree. answer your question, Mr. Johnson, I think yes, this is part, this is step one of a multi-phase type of project. I think this could make for a very nice pedestrian space, but it absolutely needs to be more than just piece one. If, we, if, if we're going to vote for this, we should be doing it with the intent that we're going to do two and three as well. Okay. And I think we address our, I think we're addressing that on item B and C in terms of the m moving forward portion of it. I, I believe that that's where we're going. I, I don't know if you want to take it a step further beyond that. Are you saying we don't all at once? Well, if I can. Uh, item one had a cost item to it, so it's a little further along. Item two is the segment between second and 11 mile road. Um, the committee did discuss that. Um, the parking deck that's being built adjacent to it does not require that that whole alley get ripped out and replaced. It only requires some spot work. Um, uh, so the cost of that, we've asked Colasani and Plant Moran to look at if you wanted to do something similar to it. I don't have that breakdown yet um, in terms of what they think that would add to it uh, as far as a listed itemized list. Um, ball parking it, uh, the gentleman from Plant Moran says it should be about $100,000 on top of what's already there, which would be consistent with what's presented in this case um, but in order to do it we need to do it and start engineering it and designing it because there was no plan to move forward with it there's no funding for it out of the out of that bond sale for that deck so that was the reason the infrastructure committee was looking at it was uh, do you want to not only have it done but do you want to fund it um, so <coughs> yes it's item a is the one segment item two is the next segment, and then item three is south of third down to sixth street, and that item solely today deals with hiring a firm to come out and actually look at it and come up with a master plan of what you can and can't do there based on the fact that it's somewhere between 18 and 15, 16 feet in width as you go down those segments. The alley from third to 11 mile will be some 30 feet wide. It'll have two lanes of traffic plus a, um, a sidewalk. So it's much wider than what's going to be south of it. But the committee's been talking about doing improvements to the whole segment. So you have a recommendation from the committee on all three. So 
We just broke in part. When uh, in in the committee, um, so the the way I'm reading this, just so I understand, is if we go ahead with everything, whether it's today or when we get improvements, the DDA will cover 11 mile to second. The DDA will cover third to sixth, and then the Boji group and us would split. Okay, well, it's Third not second, it's no. not quite a split. It's no, no, no. more of a it's more three quarters. It's we're just no, no, doing no, no, the no, upgrade. No, 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 the up, but the upgrade. I understand. I understand. But 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 eleven to second doesn't re require replacement. No, the boat the, the developer was responsible for is responsible for replacing no matter what. The hundred thousand the developer is spending to replace that that had to happen no matter what. Correct. The upgrade is. The portion we are right. looking at. Right. Um, and just my thoughts on it, since we're going to be responsible for the rest, okay, um, and since the developer obviously has an interest in it, which, which I would too if I were him, it's going to make it more attractive, um, but we're also doing 100% on our own 11 to second which although it is a parking structure, the majority of that parking structure is dedicated to his employees to, to his employees in his building. So we're spiffing that in. Also, um, I would assume that because that will be a more pleasant look, that the developer will be able to charge higher rents for the offices facing that, as opposed to if it was just a drab alley. Um, the only thing I can think of is the building that I live in. You know, our alley's kind of dank and dark, whereas, you know, our side looks out. Some people look out on the Main Street. Not a fair comparison, but there's a, a, a significant difference in the value of, of the, the properties. Um, so if you make the alley better, I think the, the, the lease rates would tend to go up. <coughs> um, on top of that, you know, I think there's the, 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 the city has... Um, incentivize the developer in certain ways, dollar for the land, five and a half million dollars. Um, I guess my, I, 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 I don't want to see the businesses assessed on this, particularly because they're the ones who are going to have a difficult time during construction. So the last thing I think that we want to do is put any more hardship on them. But I think a fair split would be for the developer to pay 100% of the upgrade from second to third, and we're paying 100% of the upgrade from second to first, as well as improving third to sixth, which makes that whole walkway more valuable. Okay. I just want to clear one thing up. I want to make sure that, so there's no misunderstanding that there is no no further discussion about assessing any of the business owners okay. about this project. So I want to make that clear. Uh, second is the majority of the discussion that went on at the infrastructure committee was that one of the reasons why we felt like we should participate in this um, was for the benefit of those flows uh, right. for those businesses there. But that being said, I'll refer to anybody else that has some comments. I just I want to I think I want to simplify it even more for the folks at home that are, sure. this may be complicated. Um, there's been some talk that we are further. Um, gifting uh, money to Boji, and this is exactly the opposite. This is for the businesses that are adjacent to that business in the alley. All of those businesses, I mean, if I had a business there, I sure would clean up my rear entrance and put a couple of tables out there and, and make it An entrance. Um, and another entrance because these are the types of things that developers are doing in downtown Detroit with you know, cool lighting and stuff like that. I saw the illustrations. Unfortunately, they're not attached to the, the packet, and this is something that I'm really excited about. I, I think he's he doesn't have to spend the money to do this, and, and I get what you're saying, um, I, and I see the logic in it. However, I feel like we're, the DDA is doing this for the businesses that are being inconvenienced, not for the and, and, I, and I understand that, where and, and I agree 100%. And the biggest business that will benefit from this is the developer. Not necessarily. 
Well, except the most areas. Except except the whole people block. walking the city will benefit. This no, I understand. No, I understand. No, but yeah, not a business. But the yeah. question was, and I agree with Gary that the businesses will benefit from it. And I mean, Mr. B's will, um, Comet Burger will, so will the building. I totally agree. But he has offered to split it with us. He doesn't have to do anything at all. But 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 again, I, I understand. But we're picking up the whole enchilada for the other four blocks. But we also run the risk of him backing out and having that second to third then be an alley. I, sure we do. Sure we do. I mean, if that's if that's what it comes down to, that that it would end up that that we would want to go ahead and do that, and and and, and that's it's like that. I this alley is almost like the entrance to the park. It's a, a continuation of the whole field, that whole new area. I, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I just feel the developer should pay the upgrade for that block, and we pay the upgrade for the other four blocks. I think that's fair. Okay. Director Yezik. Uh, a couple things on this conversation right here. There was some discussion about if the developer went ahead and the DDA didn't step in, that we would be able to, or the city would be able to assess the business owners. Is that that there was that was mentioned at the at the committee level, but it didn't it, it didn't go anywhere. But they have we would have the right to assess them if we wanted to do that. I'm gonna let Mr. Twain answer that. Um, well, I, I think you'd ask the city to consider special assessing them. Um, like to special assess sidewalks or other road improvements. So the city would have the right to special assess. Yes. Yes. So Definitely. if we didn't do anything, the DDA would not. If the di if we didn't do anything, and the developer went ahead and just did the generic sidewalk, and then we later, when we had the complete alley improvement plan, cost it out, engineered everything, and we did want to go ahead with it the city would likely assess everybody along the alley, so that would include then the developer who is now on the alley, correct? But we would have to go back in and then redo what he did, which would cost more money. So really, in effect, we're saving the developer money. If we went ahead and did it now, we're saving everybody money because we're doing something now that could be done later. So we're not, you know, depending on what we decide here, we're actually saving the developer money because he would be obligated to contribute later on. Is that, is that fair? I think, yeah, sure. I think it's a fair statement. I think uh, um, we just, we felt at the committee level that um, any discussion about special assessment should just be taken off the table simply because of the hardships of some right. of the businesses. I, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted yeah. to clarify yes. for the board, in, in my mind, there would be a future obligation if there wasn't a um, offer to contribute now and really save everybody some money now because we're doing something that's that's uh, in construction anyway. So, uh, going back to Director Johnson's point, I agree 100%. This makes absolutely no sense unless there's an intent to do an overall alley improvement program. What is one block or two? You know that doesn't make any sense at all. But I think the alley improvement program is a fantastic idea. It could very much reinvigorate downtown and, and, and really uh, generate that pedestrian traffic that we're looking for, especially with the, all this office coming online. So I, I agree 100% with that. But not having the ability to look at the total cost of, uh, of a venture like that, I think we're in a little bit of a, a bind. I, I don't think anybody, anybody would say that this isn't a good idea. So I guess the only question remaining is, how do we determine what's an equitable distribution of this cost for doing this alley improvement that we don't even know what the total cost is yet? And that goes to your point, Director Riley, should the developer pay for the whole thing? And since we're taking on the rest of it, that's, that's really what, what we have to decide, what's an equitable allocation of this, of this cost. I can, uh, I, I, I see some very good points in that. I really do. Um, one of the reasons being is, is that um, 
Um, we're really only discussing pavement and concrete right now. So anything else that may come uh, down the road to enhance this alleyway is going to be additional cost at that point. To us. To us. Or unless we get participation in, in some way, shape, or form from property owners. Right. But, 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 right. but so, in, in other words, once, once the pavement's done, we go with lights, et cetera, this, that, and the other, right. that's coming out of our, our, our budget, or we would go to assess the businesses. And, you know, so this, this is just, and, and I agree with you guys. I, I like this idea. I think it's a great idea. I'm just saying what, what, what I believe to be equitable would be, you know, we're picking up more than the lion's share um, because of all the separate blocks, particularly the block between 11 Mile and 2nd, which although that's not part of the developer's project, certainly enhances the developer's project immensely. Not only, not only the pavement, but the 565 spot parking structure that the city's paying for. So, Mr. Twing, do, where, where does, where's the city at on this in terms of um, the construction and um, the time frame for this to get done? Well, we're only talking about second to third. Correct. Is that what you're asking about? Yes. It's really in Mr. Bogey's court. He's building it. Uh, you can, you can, he's here. You can ask him what his schedule is for finishing. Uh, as far as the parking deck, I can address the parking deck segment. But okay, uh, Mr. Bogey. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm Ron Bogey, president of the Bogey Group. Um, wonderful um, conversation very in-depth and and it's um it's exciting to hear how you're being forward thinking about what's going to look to take place over numerous blocks i do want to take a moment to give a little bit of a history so maybe it can be better for your knowledge and when you make your decision so from inception of the development my staff members and our external team has always thought about an active alleyway very similar to downtown detroit and i think it's called the um the edge or i forget the exact the belt the belt the belt, the belt. and to emphasize on the dumpsters or the external items that an alley is an alley is an alley right there's no doubt about it but by making some aesthetic improvements and monitoring the alley in the course of the business day is more important than anything else. We are fortunate. The shops, the eateries to the west of us are already enclosed, similar to the way other alleys are activated that way. And ours is interior in, in the interior of the building. So as we continued thinking through this, we knew we wanted to make this one stretch a very active alleyway, yes, for the building. But as time moved on, it was more for the restaurateurs and the shops to the west of us that are having hardship today but will benefit tremendously in the future. We could have and we still can, depending upon the decision tonight. Unfortunately, the chicken and the egg concept. Well, we're the first one, we're the egg. Because we have to, to answer in a long-winded way, we will start putting concrete in and be completed before Arts Beats and Eat on Thursday, the 29th. Off the top of my head is the 29th. That means after today's vote, I, as an owner, have to make a decision. Do I go back to the ordinary grayish looking concrete? Or do we take the extra leap of faith and put in the stamped concrete and the additional roughly 120000 over and above the amount that we would have needed to have spent already? 
And also what was stated if we elected to just stay with the standard concrete and then you did your improvements from 11 to second and then subsequently from third to sixth, you could come back to us and say, rip out that concrete and put in stamped concrete or other things to conform with all the other ones. But what would you then have done right away? You would special assess the merchants who have been good to us. And I think you know what I mean by good to us versus maybe some of the other owners in that vicinity. And they would be assessed. We're doing the opportunity to cover them. That's really what we're doing. We're covering half of the additional costs on behalf of our neighbors who have been very good neighbors to us because it's their want. Truly, if you talk to, to, to Chef Johnny and Mr. B's and everyone else, this is their want, and it's going to accentuate them far more than us. I don't know if we will ever have any retail on the most westerly side of our building. It may just be an office building along there, and we don't benefit anything. We're doing it to be a good neighbor to our, to our uh, adjacent to the west of, of, of the building. And also in hopes that you would have all the way from 11 mile on. So either of your decisions tonight, I completely respect and understand. But this is not an economic incentive that the Central Park Development Group is asking of the DDA. This is an economic incentive that the building tenants and to not impact the nearby uh, uh, shops, this is a way to be able to do it by us getting involved now. So. Okay, thank you. Just one second. We, uh, if anybody has a question for Mr. Bolzi, do we have that? Just, uh, you heard the conversation up here. What, what do you think, in, 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 in our opinion, that probably the uh, your office building would benefit from, from this if we did this whole alley improvement program what would your um, uh, I guess idea or, or uh, feeling be about what's an equitable distribution uh, including you know now uh, including in, in the thought process that we would do from 11 mile to third at the very minimum great question this is London answered it already how did you answer it? The entire downtown area is going to prosper for this active alleyway. We do, and all the other patrons and the people coming to Royal Oak will prosper from it. For that, I'm already coming and going to contribute half. Of the 11 mile to third, or are you still talking about second to third? Just, just our area. Just our area. I don't... So then you could go the other angle, between 4th, 3rd and 4th. I don't see you going to the people and special assessing them. I already heard you, you're going to probably cover it. I don't know that we've had any conversation about that, but... All, all, all I'd like to say is that whatever your decision is, I respectfully and humbly accept it. I just feel that because timing, we happen to be first. And it seems that we're being looked at, let me use my words correctly. If it would have been we were the last piece of the puzzle and we came with the, and you had already had precedent of the previous blocks that you were doing them. And I came to you and said, I know there's precedent that you do it, but you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be a good patron to the city, to the DDA, to the tax, but I'll cover half. I think you would be quite pleased with that, but it's not. I'm first. Okay, one second. Director Riley first. Yeah. Um, 
And I don't know if I answered the question. Mr. I'm Bowden, sorry if I where, did. Where in, your, in the building is the restaurant going to be located? To the easterly side of the building overlooking the park. Okay, so it will be on the park side. So what will open up to the alley? Because I noticed in the drawings that I saw there were, there were some tables and chairs out there. Those are the tables and chairs of the Mr. B's and the other. They were, but they were on the other side, on, on, on the east side of the alley. We could promote to organizations if they wanted a back area along the alley, and then they would, they would prosper from it. But I don't. Retail or commercial? Retail. Retail. Like, for example, if the restaurant owner who came into the easterly side overlooking the park said, oh, there's an active alleyway. Why wouldn't I put some, some items back there to complement? They could. Okay. Is, is there the possibility that, that other businesses besides the one restaurant would, would be on the back side that would utilize the alley? No, because from the other side, it's all of a commercial use, not a retail use. The most northerly side of it. Towards, towards the structure? Towards the structure, yes. Okay. Um, so, obviously, um, I'm, we, the DDA will be, or the city, will be responsible for maintaining the alley, um, whatever. And if we're going to do it nice, we're going to maintain it nicely. We're going to enhance it. And I guess it's a blunt question, but I'm going to ask you, um, knowing that if we, we were agreeable to doing the other five blocks of the alley, paving it, maintaining the entire six blocks, enhancing the entire six blocks. You've agreed to pay half of it. Would you walk away on the other half, knowing that we were going to do that? So is your question, if you voted not to approve the request. If we voted no on the request on one, yes on two and three. But two and three is just the... It's not your block. It's the not other your block. block. Yeah, it's the other blocks. And isn't two and three only the... To bring on... P you're not voting today no. to approve the other ones to do. You're just voting today to commission an organization to see what it would look like and get numbers, and then you'll... Evaluated. So you stretch from 11 to a second. Correct. 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 You may elect not to when you get your numbers and so forth. You, you, you may elect not to do all of them. Correct. Okay. So I'm almost going to throw it back. I'm almost going to put it the other way. What happens if I elect to do it? You don't get involved. I elect to do it. Mm -hmm. And you never do any of the other ones. I got you. Uh, Director Bagley. I want to go to something that you mentioned in terms of precedent. Tim, is there any precedent that the DDA has gotten involved with, with, with the Atkin? Didn't we do an upgrade um, behind the I, Atkin pro project? Behind where? Atkin. No, we didn't. Didn't the DDA take the, do the improvements of the alley behind the Atkin building? No. No. Okay, do you have any other questions for Mr. Boji? Yes, was that a scratch or a... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Back to the table. And Tim, I'll ask you this. Um, could we create a scenario here where if we said we... If we don't do the entire thing all the way through, then we would cover the half. Reimburse that. Yeah. Well, I, I, you can take whatever action the board feels comfortable taking. So to answer that question, what I would say in that regard is the development Mr. Bozier required by the city in their approved plans to put back the standard concrete. Standard. So if you took that motion and he has to finish it before Arts, Beats, and Eats, which is a requirement yes. as well, and get it back open. It's going to fall back to his court whether to choose to do so or Correct. not. 
you're not going to have a decision by then as to whether you're doing the rest. Correct. So, correct. But you if may he, end but, up but if with he, if he you took, may end up with standard concrete on this segment. That's the that's the sure. That's the risk you're taking. That's where you chose to go. And I right. and I and I don't think what you want to do is then turn around a year from now and where tear it up and. That doesn't look very good either, because then you're redisturbing those businesses while you do that. So it's an opportune time to do it. I'm not recommending you do one thing or the other, but um, if you're going to do this, now is the time to do this. Not. I understand. I remembered what I was going to. The streetscape between the post office and Etkin, we we voted to either leave it plain or. Or do the yeah, you you, the west side of Center Street um, between. We've worked together for three years. With the city, and very little of the DDA. This is the first time I've been in front of you, and I love the passion and the energy and the thoughtfulness of all of this. I do not want my first interaction with the DDA to be this much of a decision making because um, we will be coming back to you very shortly. So I would like to withdraw my request and I will put in the stamped concrete 100% we will pay for it. But I just hope you remember the olive branch I have extended today in our soon-to-be um, meeting of a request. So for the record, we will put exactly what you see and not ask for a dollar. Okay. Any clarity? Does anybody need any clarity on that? Um, any comments, questions? Well, this is not pertaining to what he just said, but in general, I thought we should be, we should be playing poker with this decision, like, like you wanted to play poker with it. Secondly, I think... Um, me? Did you, what did you say, Mrs. Lund? <laughs> it seemed like there was a little... We were playing poker, especially with the Town Detective Director, right? Because it's a business decision, ultimately, and it's a thing for the community, and it'd be, it's going to be a wonderful thing. And just in the future, I think we should get our Arts Commission involved because it's a great alley. It'd be a great place to introduce some artwork. Okay. My other decision. We, we'd be happy to be involved with them. We are going to put exactly what you see, and it'll be done by, by Labor Day, all the decorative stamped concrete and the color and everything, and we're withdrawing our request. Okay. Tim, any, anything you need? No, I, and, and he's indicated that. I would just say, just for the record, too, as well, there is no requirement that he do this. He's choosing to do it on his own. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank you very much. Thank Look you. forward to seeing you soon. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody from the Tribune here? <laughs> okay, so, uh, Tim, we'd like to move on to the second part of this. Yep. Get down to where it's at. Uh, the second item really is a discussion of that same alley from 2nd Street North to 11 Mile Road. Are we ready to invite Jason back to the table? Yep. Oh, yes, he wanted to Where definitely be part of this. Sorry, left. He's, He's, right back. He's coming around. Is he in the audience or was he in the back? He's probably went to talk to him. Well, he can, he can uh, join in. Really is the segment, as I was saying, between 2nd and 11. Um, the, only, the only thing that's <coughs> happening in that um, area, and you can see the plan in your packet portion is up there on the screen, um, is to the west of the uh, parking deck, there will be a row of surface parking spaces and a couple of bump out for... Uh, landscaping and the uh, overhead utility lines and then again there will be the actual alley with uh, sufficient room for 
two vehicle travel lanes. Uh, it's most likely going to be southbound only from 11 mile um, towards second because of traffic concerns with people trying to, uh, oh, excuse me, northbound from second to 11 mile because we don't want people turning into the alley uh, off of 11 and then a sidewalk to the west. Um, so the alley itself, other than where there were some connections potentially to the storm drain and some other things, there's no planned real activity um, as part of this project. So if you want to see this pattern repeated from, from 2nd to 11, um, I would like some action to say that um, you would like that to occur. You're basically going to authorize some money to be spent to design it from the engineers, uh, get some estimates out, and then we'd probably add it to Colasani's contract uh, to give us an estimate, and that dollar amount would come back to you as far as a total cost to authorize the expenditure. If you look at what's provided to you from second or from second to third, it's got to be in the same sort of cost range in terms of pulling out the concrete and putting new back. Um, we're not removing the sidewalks in this segment along the east side of the buildings. Um, I wouldn't suggest we do that here where we are on the other segment. Uh, so it would be, <coughs> excuse me, it would be slightly different. Uh, but right now there is no, there's no plan to improve this segment beyond the, what you see on the west side of the parking deck. Any questions for Mr. Twain? When, um, when, when, so the, the concrete will need to be, so, so this will be, a, you, didn't earlier you say that it would be approximately, I, I know, I know Colasani's got to look at it, but approximately the same cost. Are you saying the same cost as the 100000 to replace it and... Well, based on the preliminary estimate that I got from our representative at Plant Moran, the project manager, he believed based on the work that was was being done, the spot work, right, and just doing the alley portion, it would add somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred to hundred twenty thousand dollars to the cost. So, based on that estimate, that's what I have. I don't, okay. I don't have a breakdown, but um, the first step would be to actually have it laid out, engineered, and then have it, Got it. put as part of the and, bid. And all we're voting on here is, is getting that You're cost estimate from You're giving me a clear that. direction you want to, want to do it. You want to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So okay. right now there's no plan to do it. Got it. Tim, did they, two questions. One, did they discuss also, as you're coming the one way in the alley, to have it right turn only onto 11 Mile Road? or um, Was that part of the discussion? or? I don't know that it's a huge concern as part of the, the, the traffic study. What the concern was was um, people trying to enter there in the conflicts. And then the directional also would begin at 3rd and go all the way to 11 mile? No, from 2nd to 3rd it would be two-way. Okay. Because you got a way in and a way out. Okay. You're not, you're not conflicted with the traffic signal at 11 in Maine and the left turn lane. And then, um, last question, the, the, so the, the cost estimates would be um, based on the material being used between second and third? Basically. Okay. Who Dr. gives Lyman? the direction to the, the architect, landscape architect, what we want in that space? Uh, well, if you want to proceed with this, really all, again, we're talking about is the concrete material, the paving material. I'm not getting into whether there's ultimately going to be lights or other things in there, that's that's something else. But if we want lights, don't does the electricity have to be put in before they pour the concrete? No, because the conduits are all going to be there. The, the overhead lines are still going to be there. You're still going to have access to electricity. You're still going to have the supply to it. Um, so ultimately, I think we want some bike, a bike rack or something like that. Right, if, but if I wait for that design right. to occur, this right. isn't going to get right. done. Right. It's just going to be next year. Okay. 
I mean, I can I can put a break on it and design the daylights out of it. But no, I think we just need to understand that we're really only dealing with right. the concrete portions right, right now, and right. a lot of this other stuff is going to come right. back to us right. as the project moves forward. Director Yes. I make a motion to prepare construction drawings and submit them for bid to generate a cost for proceeding with the alley improvement way between 11 mile and second. Second. Motion by Director Yazvik, second by Director Riley. Any further discussion? No, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I think uh, we've been touting alleys for a long time and we're finally actually doing something, so yeah. it's important. Agreed. Okay, I'll call for the vote then. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And the, the last, third segment. The last item, C, um, the committee had been talking about this segment of uh, third to fourth uh, for some time about what could happen to get it improved. Uh, that got expanded from third to uh, sixth street uh, based on a walking it with engineering, what, what could occur in it. Uh, so engineering contacted one of the engineering firms that they have under uh, a contract with um, and had them put a proposal together to come up with a master plan for that <coughs> entire segment. All of this is is for them to put a plan together as to what what can be done there and how it could be done, whether it's repaving, dealing with uh, uh, lights, dealing with dumpster locations. So it'll be a master plan of what to do there, and it's, I believe, $5,800 to come up with that master plan. This is not to do any specific work. It's just to present a, put together and put a plan together for you guys. The second thing I would say on this later on the agenda, um, one of the items under the uh, Main Street, uh, you, you'll recall that Sean talked to you about technical assistance. And we were that thinking that we would have them pay for this out of that if we could. Oh, we have enough money to cover this? Yeah, I believe it's between six and seven thousand oh. dollars in technical assistance. They would still have to approve it, um, but that, we would we would present them with this as an item they would pay for. Out of the Main Street program? Right, <coughs> from Oakland County. Oh, so. okay. Now that's it may or may not happen. It's up to them sure. to approve it. But it's something that we could we're submit. It's submittable. Yeah. Okay. Director Yasvik. I make a motion to approve the proposal from Fleissen Vandenbrink at a cost of 5800 and authorize the executive director director to execute the contract. Second. Motion by Director Yasvik. Second by Director Krieger. Further discussion? I just want to see if there's two different figures. I just want to figure if yeah. it's 600. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This And this is, remember, this is different than these two segments. This is, um, to be very frank, the, the Infrastructure Committee, when before any of this was presented to us, we were discussing the alley between <laughs> third and fourth and how bad it was and how we needed to come up with some sort of plan uh, with the dumpsters, with the roadway, and how bad, and the potholes, and everything else. So um, that was where all of this originally started, was that block. So uh, now that we're doing these two, we think we need to you know, extend it down a little farther. So when, when uh, the firm was walking down the alley, was there any mention of a potential development at Fifth and Williams behind Bastones because I know we've been approached a couple times regarding development there. Was that mentioned to them that if they did come up with whatever they come up with, that could be modified if something happened down the road with that? Good point. Yep. Very good point. Any other comments? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Okay, item six, valet application, 202 East 3rd Street, Lockhart's. Oh, well, this has been in, was in front of you at one point in time, and the, the DDA did pass a recommendation on to the city commission uh, to reject it. Uh, it was brought back to the DDA at your July meeting, and you referred it to the 
uh, infrastructure committee uh, to look at again. The committee did meet with the applicant, um, and they have provided you with a, a second recommendation. In the in the interim, in between those those two actions, uh, the, the application changed slightly, in that one of the uh, parking lots that was going to use be used to store vehicles was uh, withdrawn from the application and replaced with a different one. The one, the one south of Lockhart's, that surface lot was removed and was replaced with uh, a surface lot on the north side of 3rd at Knowles uh, as far as a place to store uh, uh, some of the vehicles. The actual layout or outline is part of your packet. The committee, as I said, did meet with uh, the petitioner and they are they d recommending that you pass a recommendation of approval to the city commission uh, with three conditions. Uh, the first condition is that if any of the, either of the two lots that are included in the application become unavailable, uh, that the uh, valet operation simply be a, uh, suspended until uh, the lot is replaced with an, another one that can be approved. Uh, condition B is if the surface lot that was previously part of the application south of Lockhart's uh, does or at any point in the future become part of the operation that the valet operation on 3rd Street be terminated. It's still the committee's opinion that that lot can be used for drop-off and staging. Uh, and C was that any and all valet signage uh, used to simply identify the service and not the name of any of the adjacent businesses. The committee did not want it to appear that uh, they were solely for the adjacent business operations, but for everyone's use. Uh, so those are the three conditions that the infrastructure committee is recommending that the DDA consider. Uh, the committee also did discuss a, a, a second action, but I'll stop with that one because I know I think the petitioner's okay. representatives here and we'll deal with them in two steps. Okay. So I'm going to have the petitioner come forward now. <coughs> Good afternoon again. I'm still David Richards, uh, address 415 Pottawatomie in Royal Oak, and I'm still representing National Valet as their attorney. Uh, I should tell you that National Valet gets involved with the Dream Cruise, so the Reno Scafoni, the principal, is busy with that, and that's why I'm here by myself. Hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions that may come up, at least I'll do my best. Uh, I know you're already familiar with the request, and uh, yeah, but if you'll uh, bear with me, I'd like to kind of go over the briefly the request and also the three conditions that have been proposed. Uh, in one of the three conditions, we're very happy we will take care of that. Two of the others, we're going to ask for a little modification, uh, which I think will still preserve the spirit of what was intended, uh, but make it so that there will not be uh, unexpected consequences from those particular conditions. The proposal would have the effect of adding parking capacity downtown. National Valet, Valet has the use of two private lots for storage of vehicles until their pickup, one on the Knowles and one in Fourth and Troy. The first has a capacity of 40 vehicles. The second has a capacity that depends on the striping and code requirements of the city, but it appears somewhere between probably 20 and 25 additional vehicles. Uh, these are uh, parcels of private property not currently available for public parking in the evening. Vehicles parked there by the valet service, by National Valet, will be removed primarily from on-street parking. And as has already been pointed out uh, as one of the conditions, that uh, while this uh, is proposed on 3rd Street right next to Lockhart's on the north side, uh, it would be open to anybody visiting downtown. And the condition that uh, is the simplest to comply with is the one about not having any signage that's specific to Lockhart's. It would be general national valet uh, so that anybody who's coming downtown would have access to it. Uh, my client wants to make as much money as possible in the enterprise, and so there's no reason to turn anyone away. So it would be a benefit to downtown in general, not simply Lockhart's. So we're asking for the DDA's recommendation of a proposal which will open up dozens of uh, spaces of on-street parking. <coughs> the 
vehicles that use a valet are no longer going to require on-street parking and will be taken to a private lot. If 20 people use a valet service at a cost of three on-street parking places, that's a net gain of 17 parking places uh, for the downtown and at a time when there's a major parking crunch. <coughs> I know I don't have to tell you that, but I want to emphasize it. Uh, this would be beneficial to the downtown parking situation and the businesses that depend on customers having access to those businesses. Now, the subcommittee recommended approval with conditions, and we certainly thank the subcommittee, the infrastructure uh, committee, for that approval. Uh, we do, however, ask that you consider modification of two of the conditions. As I've indicated, condition C is fine. No problem with that one. Condition A, as proposed, would provide that National Valet loses access to, if it loses access to one of its two lots, the authorization would be suspended. Uh, I am not sure the purpose of that condition uh, because many valet services in the city, our understanding is, do not have the capacity anywhere close to what we're talking about. Uh, if we were to have access to simply 20 to 25 spaces, it would still be a net gain in parking for the city. Now, I can understand if we don't have any private lots that have been designated for this purpose, that's a problem. But why, if we were to lose one of the two, that would cause our right to operate to be suspended. Uh, at least I can tell you I do not understand the rationale. So what I'm proposing in that instance is that the uh, condition be modified so that the words either of be removed from that condition. I'm talking about condition A, which would mean if my client lost access to two, uh, the both lots, that would be a problem. You'd have to close down until other arrangements were made and come back and get approval. But the reason for if one of them was lost, my client could still operate. It would still be a benefit. And uh, there's no reason why it needs to be closed down if simply one lot is lost. At the, this point, we have access to both, but we don't want to have the business disrupted unnecessarily uh, if we were to lose access to one of the lots. Now, condition B has to do with terminating the authorization in the event valet service is provided in the parking area immediately south of Lockhart's restaurant, an area which I know some members of the committee would prefer that we be able to operate from and be on private property, would not use the three on-site or uh, on-street spaces. But we do not have access to that property at this time. Now, I can understand if a fully operating uh, valet service was to open there, whether it was through my client or through a third party, uh, I can understand not wanting to have both of them going on at the same time and using up the three spaces on the street when you have access right next to it. But the problem as it's written uh, in this condition is the possibility of isolated instances where there would be valet service used on that space. There have been at least uh, one instance, possibly two, where at Lockhart's a wedding reception was held where there was uh, valet service provided in that space. It's private property, did not require city approval. So I don't want to, my client to be in a position, if that happens again, uh, that he loses his right and the language of the condition uh, is that the right and authorization to operate would be totally terminated. So what I propose, and I should also say, I wondered about the space above Lockhart's, which is not, to the best of our knowledge, currently rented. It's not occupied, but I'm not aware that there's a tenant there yet. If, say, a professional office were to go in there and want to have a grand opening and wanted to have valet service uh, for one day, uh, that's not something that ought to interfere with the authorization that we're talking about here. Now, if that makes any sense to you, uh, the suggested language that I would propose uh, would be to add in condition B, in the second line in front of the words valet operations, the words regular or continuous. I'm not married to those words. If you've got different words that propose the same concept, no problem, but uh, something to that effect. And as I'm proposing it, that condition would then read, if the surface parking lot south of and adjacent to Lockhart's is used for regular or continuous 
valet operations at any point in the future, the valet operation at 202 East 3rd Street is immediately terminated. So if there's an ongoing usage, okay, uh, we realize there's a problem and uh, we'll take our chances on that happening. Uh, but we are concerned about an isolated instance resulting in the termination of our right to operate. So those are the two changes that we propose. And as I said, uh, I thank you for uh, the approval of the, the infrastructure committee with the conditions. Uh, I think that the modifications that I've suggested still meet with the spirit of what was intended, but it would make my client's business a lot safer from an arbitrary disruption. So those are the reasons why we propose it. Uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding that or the proposal overall, I'll do my best to answer them. And I certainly thank you for your consideration, especially uh, thank you for letting us come back after not being able to appear the first time around when this was on the agenda. So that's what I've got to say. Questions for the petitioner? None? None. Oh, Mr. Johnson. Question regarding the two lots uh, that are being offered. I believe both of those have been used for valets in the past. In fact, I thought they were still being used for valets. Am I wrong? Uh, they are not. Uh, I can't tell you the history, but uh, my information is that at the present time, neither one is being used for valet service. And does Mr. Scafoni have an exclusive use of those lots in, under contract? Uh, we have provided the agreement with... Uh, each property owner and I cannot tell you if the language says exclusively but that is the intention because if the argument is that this is generating more parking and it's already being used for valet or is available to other valets it's not generating an extra space it, it's not being used for valet and my client has looked and seen. I'm not going to tell you there haven't been stray vehicles on either lot, but they have not been open to public parking. Uh, you know, whether or not those, those vehicles that may be on the lot are just trespassers who do not have permission, I can't tell you that the lots have been totally vacant every single day, uh, but they are not generally used. Uh, the spaces that we're talking about would be available to my client. If there's somebody that parks during the day and stay, overstays during the day, bearing in mind this service is intended to be after 5 o'clock. If somebody works late and leaves a vehicle in the lot, that could happen. So I'm not going to tell you that absolutely 40 to 65 spaces exactly are going to be available, but I can tell you all the information we have is that substantially all of those spaces would be available. And if it works out the way it should, all of them would be, but uh, we cannot promise that there wouldn't be incidental uh, variations on that. Uh, on that note, um, you said that, that you're sure that they're not being used for valet. I know there was a time where 4th Street Auto used to be used for a pay to park. Are they no longer doing that? Uh, that's my understanding is that they're not. Because Director Johnson makes a good point. I mean, if they fill that place up, if they are doing pay for, pay for park and they fill that place up, then those spots aren't available. <clears throat> I think you understand our concern here is, is that if, if even though that there is 25 spots available on a particular lot, if it is being half used, then there isn't 25, 25 spots available, and there's only 12. And then the, the giveaway, we could argue back and forth whether that's enough to justify this application or not. So I, I think what, and I, I don't understand it to tell you the truth, because if I'm Mr. Scarfone, your client, and I've got, if I'm paying to use that lot or leasing that lot for one reason or another, I, I wouldn't want anybody parking on that lot. I'd want that available for customers uh, that I can collect money from. That, that's the intention. Uh, I, you know, I can't tell you the individual vehicles. If the property owner were to come by and want to park 
his or her personal vehicle. Right. Or, I don't think we'd, we'd turn them away or say you can't do that. So I don't want to give you an absolute. Uh, but bear in mind, we're talking about three spaces on the street. So theoretically, at least, anything beyond three cars parked on private property where they have not been parked in the past would be a plus. Now, I'm not seriously proposing that because if there's only four people using the valet service, my client isn't going to make any money and it's all academic anyway. It's going to be closed down. If he can't park a substantial number of vehicles on those lots, then he's not going to make money and he's not going to want to do it. So can I promise you that it's going to be 60 to 65 spaces always available? I don't want to promise that because that's unrealistic. Will a substantial number of them be available? And perhaps, ideally, all of them? Yeah, that, uh, that can happen. In any case, as long as there's a, a more than three, we're coming out ahead as, tar as far as parking is concerned downtown. So I think, uh, um, I'll get you next one. I understand your point of view. And I don't want to have any back and forth about it, but I think we have heard from many, many people here, and there probably could be 100 people could walk through the door and tell you that those three spaces are actually more valuable than the 25 spaces that you have over on there. And I get your, your math and your net gain, and it makes sense to me. But from a point of view of some of our residents, I don't think that they do the math that way. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But that's just the point. I, I can tell you, I'll spread the word the extent <laughs> I can. Does, um, Riley. <laughs> does Mr. Scafoni have an agreement with 4th Street Auto that they can't pay and park there? Uh, there's a copy of the uh, agreement uh, that's in with the materials. I, it's not a lawyer-drafted contract, and so I don't recall. And, and, and again, I'll back up what Dr. Sophia said. Um, the, those three spots, particularly given the conditions and the timing with everything going on with, with the parking lots out front here, are, are, are very important. And you, you're coming here saying that there's going to be 60-some-odd, uh, what was the number? How many spots? Is it 65. Could be? 65 spots. Or 60, so 62 are being created. That's fine. But if that lot, because um, I've driven by that lot on several occasions, I haven't paid attention recently. But on weekend nights, that lot in the past, you know, there's a wood sign out there parking $5, and it's filled up. Which lot? If, uh, if, you were to, if you were to put a condition in, my suggestion would be to say that these, that the uh, uh, paid parking would not be permitted on that lot uh, in connection with this authorization. Okay. That it be a condition, maybe an added condition, uh, of the authorization that that lot cannot be used for paid parking separate and apart from the valet service. Um, well, we should put it in for both lots. Right? We should put it in for both lots. Right. Okay. You okay with that? Okay. Uh, that would not be a problem. I can understand if it's already yeah. being used, uh, that's not the concept we're talking about. Right. And uh, so we'd have to make an arrangement with the property owner. The, the, the current uh, letter is informal, and it doesn't specifically say that. Right. I believe that's the intention. Okay. But we would uh, verify that, and uh, if that's a condition that it cannot be used as uh, paid parking, I would understand that as a reasonable condition of the authorization. Okay. And I don't, I don't think you can answer this question, and I, I would like to ask Mr. Scaffone if we could, is if, if those rat lots reach a limit, then what, do you know what he does? Do you, what, well, what does he do with the next customer? Currently, he would have to close down, stop accepting vehicles. Uh, but we, current, we do have uh, two lots presently, and he is always exploring for more available. Now, I was going to check later on with Mr. Twing about if he got an additional lot, if this goes well and needs an additional lot, do we need to come back and get approval for a third lot? Uh, but he would, if there's an overcapacity, would be looking around. He's mentioned to me several uh, potential lots which he does not have access to, has not been 
uh, does not have an agreement with uh, the owner at the current time, but he would like to get. So if he can, if it uh, starts out and it's used to capacity and he can find another lot to use, we would approach planning department and say, we got another lot. What do we need to do to make sure we're authorized to use that one too? Okay. Any other questions for the petitioner? <coughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Thank you. Okay, so we're back at the table here. Um, we have a few things to discuss. One, the application itself and the request for the two modifications. I don't know if anybody has any comments. I do myself, but I will. I'd slip one question. At, uh, this is at the Infrastructure Committee? Correct. And, and, and I'll ask the question. Um, for the, uh, um, the point on, on the second point of, of adding the language doesn't seem to be an issue to me, you know, for, for an ongoing or, you know, mm -hmm. continuous valet, that doesn't seem to be an issue to me. What was the reasoning for um, putting in there that if one of the lots became unavailable that, that, that this was rescinded? Well, we looked at... I, we have some. Uh, we looked at the value of decrease in density of the parking. Exactly. Okay. That, that's all. So the, the numbers. The, yeah, numbers, the numbers was that was all. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that and being the, said, in other words, what, what we talked about, what is worth giving up three meters for? Exactly. Sixty something yeah. is good. Forty something or thirty yeah. something. Sixty is good. Forty so and the twenty. Got then it. Get Got it. Why, yeah. Okay. That's why. Okay. That being said, my comments on this before anybody makes a motion is. Um, um, the petitioner said he's okay with condition C. Um, my comments are this. Commission A, I believe, should remain as is. And my two reasons for that is um, if, if those lots become unavailable, whether through redevelopment or the owner sells them to a third party or whatever, um, uh, National Valet will have plenty of time to either seek other uses, other properties. Um, and then secondary to that, I believe that they can come back to us. They can come back to us and, sure. and we can have this discussion and, and, you know, we're all reasonable here and if we will try and work with him and try and make something happen. And, and, um, and if it was a situation a year from now where the parking deck is done, then the three meters might not be, our, our situation might change. Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah, okay. it would be a different situation yep. in the future. Yep. So um, my opinion is, is that item A should remain the same. Um, item B, um, I'm okay with the language, uh, as I think you guys have mm -hmm. stated, yep. that if it's just a casual one-time use that they're using that lot um, and not using it for an ongoing, uh, valet station or parking, then uh, the additional language to that I'm acceptable to, yep. and the and the petitioners agree with item C. So, those are my comments. Uh, Director Krieger first. Yeah. No, I was going to say we want to talk about adding an item D. Yes. Oh, Should okay. No pay to park. Wasn't that it? Yeah. Add a condition that lots can't be used for paid for paid paid for park paid parking. Added, uh, you want that added to their to their agreements with the property owners? No, or you want no. it. No, that'd be part of our recommendation. Oh, that they we would have A, B, C, D. D would be that. Okay. Uh, the lots could not be used for paid to park, or however it would be worded, or for any other valet service. Or for yeah. Okay. Or for, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to make sure. And when I say Mr. any other, another of Lorraine's valet services is a different valet service. Because I think it's actually being used right now by the Comedy Castle. That's a good point. To not have it used by another valet service. Because you want it to be exclusive so that you are getting the full benefit. Is the Comedy Castle... Lorraine's valet, or is that a separate service? I'm not certain. I believe at the committee level, he did discuss. Do you know, Mr. Richards? Can we? I think he does. He is uh, doing the valet service for the county. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, how many spots are we gaining here, guys? <laughs> this is zero. This. 
both lots are being used for the comedy castle? No, uh, my understanding is he has separate lots, but there are nights when there's an overflow, and he has moved around to use other lots on those occasions. If there's a particularly large crowd, uh, he will put the vehicles at a different location. I believe he has specific lots for the Comedy Castle normally. <clears throat> so at the committee level, we, we discussed this to answer I think, and it was told us that these lots were not currently online. So this was going to be a full game. Is what, that's why we were yes. just behind this. Okay. okay. Is that true? That's correct, but like I said, uh, a vehicle here and there, I can't say it hasn't been on those lots. Sure, sure. But substantially, so right. substantially. Sure. But right um, now, there's not, not a, being used. there's not a guy out there with a sign saying park here on the lot that's, you know. Uh, if he is, I don't think he's authorized. Okay. I don't care if there's somebody doing it right now, as long as there won't be. Exactly. Okay, so in uh, getting back to item D that you would like to see, mm -hmm. Tim, are you clear on what we're trying to get to here? Well, walk through it again. I, what I thought I heard you say was item A, you want to leave as is. Correct. What did you want to do with B? Add the verbiage. We were add, to, add to regular and continuous. Yeah, whatever the words it would be. But I, I would I would add right before regular and continuous, in the in the sole opinion of the executive director of the DA, DDA, there is no because then you can get into a, uh, twice a week isn't regular and continuous. I, I think you know you got to keep the decision making on on this side of the table, and that's the same thing for A. That's the reason to come back if either of those lots go offline is because we have to make the decision what those three spots are worth. So it's just about bringing, bringing these issues back here. Okay. And, and then you're at C is okay and D you're adding basically that those two lots can't be used for paid park. parking or other valet services. Yes. Correct. Yep. Yes, I, got, I understand that. Okay. Okay, any further discussion on this item? I will need a motion then. So uh, I'll make the motion. I don't. Do I need to run through all of that, or can we say, no, as, can say. Descri as described in the conversation and being written down by Mr. Twain? Well, as a modified. Yeah, I mean as there modified. is a motion there, to, oh. and you can do it as modified. Got motion. it. Okay, I'll make a motion uh, to move the re uh, to, for the recommendation for the resolution as modified. I have a motion by Director Krieger. Second by Director Yesbeck. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is the next item going to be this vote or not? The next item. So no, it's going to go quick. Okay. Um, I find where I'm at here. Okay. Item uh, seven, parking request, <laughs> Royal Oak Manor. Uh, this item um, was also discussed at the Infrastructure Committee. Um, what, what had been requested uh, was for the DDA to consider a recommendation regarding uh, the removal of no parking signs uh, that indicate a restriction from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. on 7th Street between May and uh, Troy, uh, Main and Troy, excuse me. Um, and the committee is recommending uh, that the DDA forward uh, a recommendation to the City Commission supporting that request uh, that those uh, parking restrictions be removed. Okay. So, the gentleman making the request is here. I think we think you've made your point clear. You see the recommendation here. Anything you want to add before we? This is primarily, we have several residents that have um, people come in for care, and a lot of times it might be at all night long. They come in at 4 o'clock, and because 
of uh, uh, circumstances, they have to be there overnight. There is that 2 to 6 a.m. parking on 7th Street, which is from Maine all the way down to Troy on both sides. Uh, this will give one, them a place to park so they don't have to run out and feed the meter at 4 o'clock in the morning uh, while they're trying to care for somebody who is very ill. Um, we have a lot of caregivers that are living, that are part of Royal Oak Manor that come and go during the day and at night. If they come and, and shifts, so if they can't park there on 7th, then they have to park somewhere. And I don't want caregivers running across Main Street or trying to cross traffic at 3 a.m. in the morning to feed a meter. Mm -hmm. uh, that is primarily for them and for us residents. Um, we get new residents in. We are telling them now that prior you likely will not have a place to park. Uh, and we tell them when they try to sign in. Some come in and say, fine, we like the area. We like being downtown where we are. We're going to, we'll, we'll worry about the parking. But we are getting, we are telling residents that the chances of parking in a parking space in one of our two lots is slim and none. Um, the way it works is we work by lease date. We also have need dates. In other words, uh, people who have doctor's orders to say that they can't walk or they have to be a shorter distance. Those people go first when the, somebody leaves or passes. Those need people go first. Everybody waits. For instance, we had one uh, need who left. Well, that puts, instead of seven, there's six. And I'm seventh on the regular list. So I'm 13 down to get in the parking place. So I am never going to get a parking. I am now parking across the street and the big parking lot, which soon will disappear. That's the other problem is where are we going to put some 33 to th people to park around Royal Oak Manor? I know the DDA is supposed to be working on it. I know the city is. Um, we uh, there was a parking lot at Six and Williams would have been perfect for us. That is now being almost in final stage of being sold because there, I see the testing engineers are pounding the cement out there pretty good. Okay, sir, I, I respectfully. Yeah. Um, but we all we want to really deal with is the issue that's right. on the table right I now. I just want to give you. I, the whole we part. understand that there's some issues that need to be addressed in the future. Contract. But we want to kind of this deal is with. This primarily for the 7th Street to remove them. Thank you. Director sure. Johnson. I'll move the recommended motion. I'll second it. Thank you. Motion by Director Johnson, second by Director Krieger. Uh, any questions or comments? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah. For five minutes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, item eight. MSOC grant agreements. Uh, in order to participate <laughs> in the uh, two grant agreements, uh, I think that Sean has presented to you in the past, or at least to the committees, uh, one regarding the Genesis grant and startup uh, activities uh, for businesses, as well as one from Flagstar. Uh, for DDA type activities, uh, we do need to sign uh, agreements with uh, the county. Um, a simple resolution there, if you're supportive of, uh, of us doing so, that would authorize me to sign both of those agreements so that we could participate in those programs. <laughs> I've also attached a copy of a grant application that we went ahead and submitted to Flagstar um, by the deadline they had of July 31st, 2018. I felt comfortable doing that in that any award would have to come back for your approval anyways, uh, but we wanted to get it in. Uh, but before the county will consider it, uh, they need uh, these agreements signed. So, Okay. Questions for Mr. Twain? No. Okay. I think uh, at both the committees that I participated in were favorable towards this. Uh, we like grants. So I'll entertain a motion. Depends. Do either of these have reporting requirements? Um, not to, I mean, they, you get, they, they have a reporting requirement in the sense that 
the county under one of them is going to actually approve the award, it will filter through the committee, uh, go to the county, and the county will actually decide whether to grant it or not to the business. So when I believe it's under the genesis where the business is applying for assistance of some type and the funding is going to the business, our reporting requirement will be to verify that uh, the business complied with the Main Street requirements. I don't see that as being very onerous, but particularly if we get to vent them before it goes to there. Uh, we had some concern, and Sean and I discussed it, but uh, was if we didn't get to vent applicants and the applicant could go directly, we were a little concerned on who they might fund. But if the DDA gets <coughs> that first, we were happy with it. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Go for it. I make a motion that the Downtown Development Authority approves participation in the Main Street Oakland County Genesis and Flagstar grant programs and authorizes the Executive Director to sign the intergovernmental agreements with Oakland County. I second that. <laughs> awesome motion by uh, Director Yazbek. <laughs> second by Director Lyndon. <laughs> Any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Uh, my computer is frozen up. Uh, let's see. We're on the committee updates. Yep. Consumer Marketing Committee. Uh, we had two meetings this past month. We've been very busy. <clears throat> we met July 25th. Um, that meeting we had a um, update from 360 events regarding Spooktacular and the Holiday Glow. She we approved the uh, graphics for both events. They're now on social media, getting attention, however you want to say it. Um, <clears throat> Julie is working with Sean and the police department on all of the city approvals for both events. So that's moving along. Um, she's also working with uh, vendors for the uh, crawl okay, crawl. in uh, December. Um, the bulk of the rest of the meeting was spent with factory on our um, PR campaign. Um, there are six modules that we chose for television slash social media and then four for radio. <coughs> um, we did a preliminary script review during that session. Um, it was very productive. Um, and then on this past Monday, we were invited back to factory's offices where we tweaked those modules. We chose uh, voices from a, a variety of voice demonstrations. That it was pretty cool, actually. Um, we chose music, uh, we approved the text, and we blessed most of the modules. We had a little sticky one with uh, a family module that kind of turned into a, a restaurant thing, so they're trying to steer that back to being family. But um, uh, that went very well. At the end of the meeting, um, we reviewed the budget with them. And uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Tony as well. Um, they feel like everything they can they can do everything that we want um, in a timely manner. And he said by the end of October, am I correct? They should be ready for air. Mm -hmm. I think by However, they were cutting it close with the budget. Um, so what? I'm going to ask for is in the interest of time and not if they do run into problems October 15th and we have to wait till the November meeting I'm going to ask for a contingency approval for an extra $5,000 in case we need it to get these things developed. Yeah, and at, at just keeping in mind we just saved $50,000. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were playing poker. We were, we were, we were playing poker. <laughs> Just, uh, I don't know good. I don't know what his second request is going to be yet. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's, that's one we have to worry about. Yeah. Take them one at a time. Option, <laughs> the other option is... Um, Was there a contingency? No, 
this out later. They, they just indicated they were going to be right about the budget, and, and actually Chairman Dunstan suggested that just to be safe and, and uh, yes, be right. able to, to respond to anything that we approve an additional 5000 Was And I wasn't able to make Monday's meeting. Was it relation to production yes. of the, the yeah, stuff? Production. So it's not buying time, it's just no, the no. production. All production. He has to negotiate the purchase of the music. So normally that stuff... <laughs> When it's for city projects, they can get a pretty good price. So you're making that a motion? Uh, I'm making that a motion. And I'll, I'll second, second it. Or you... Director, uh, motion by Director Bagdale, second by Director London. Any other questions? No. I think to get things out on time, I think that's a small dollar amount to, to shift over to that. It makes sense. Hey, let's do it. Okay. We'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Item B, Infrastructure Committee, was almost everything that was on your agenda today. So. I don't know how long that means. <laughs> do, you, do you want to discuss it again? Oh, I thought we're, we're approaching two hours. I'm, here. I'm not going to go through it. It was everything that was on the agenda today it was what our meeting was. Item C, uh, Business Marketing Committee. Um, we met on uh, August 7th. Uh, we, did, we talked with uh, the uh, developer, the owner of 218 South Main. Uh, we're still working on that. And then um, we, talk, we talked about the lift promotion, um, which the updates are in uh, Sean's notes here at the end, the downtown manager report, as well as the uh, Genesis Oakland County Main Street startup grant program and the Main Street Technical Assistance Program that we just talked about. So the Uber Lyft update just has been extended for a six-week period through September 1st. Uh, the budget set at three grand, and all the stats are there in, in the manager's report. Can that be applied to Arts Pizza Needs, the Uber? Um... <sighs> did we just, I'm trying to think, did we just, was there a reason for that? Was there, is it the drop -off? Sure would. Well, but it's not it's not limited to anyone. It's uh, but it's to a location. We have a code that we right. So people so effectively, John Woods could be advertising the, the heck out of it. But but yeah, but goal. but I'm trying to think because I think it's through September first is you know, is where we. Extend. I don't remember when it ends. Got a limited either. budget for it. Yeah, yeah, limited budget. Yeah, I think it's budget through it. September first. Advertise yeah, it and then exceed the budget and not be able to do it. <laughs> September 1st is the second day of the festival? Yeah. And don't yeah. we want to use it for yeah. customers coming Saturday. in? Saturday. Use their yeah. restaurants and not go to a yeah. festival that they... Personally. And, uh, oh, that's it. That's it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, item 10, you've been supplied with the downtown manager's report. Um, Sean's not here, so we'll pass on that. And uh, anybody other... Have any business for today? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Director Riley, seconded by Director Yesbick. Discussion? I All agree. those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.